Good evening, I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. China, in the news, in the Republican debate, Gordon Chang, Forbes.com contributor, joins me. Gordon and I have done what we can to prepare for this evening, given that the Republican debate is underway at the Reagan Library in Simi Valley. In the first hour of the debate, a China story and a Russia story and a North Korea came up, Russia came up, uh, pretty much in the context of Syria. So they, the foreign policy is a lot more sophisticated than it was in the first round of debate. And Gordon is here, and we're joined by Charles Burton because the China questions are pertinent to our conversation tonight. We're going to concentrate on Asia. And also because a, we are pending a state visit by the president of China, Xi Jinping, who's in a lot of trouble. His economy is non-transparent but clearly in decline. The tools the Communist Party is using are grotesque and ineffective. The people of China have lost confidence in the regime that has provided the, this bargain for the last 70 years. We give you prosper, uh, prosperity and we refuse to execute you and you give us loyalty. That has broken down over the last 25 years, uh, over the last uh, 25 months. But the question is where it's going, and Xi Jinping is coming to Washington. So, Gordon, in the remarks tonight, we heard the presidential candidates, uh, Rand Paul from Kentucky, Jeb Bush from Florida, and one more, Scott, Scott Walker. Walker from Wisconsin, respond to a question about China. Uh, to quickly characterize it, Scott Walker says, stop the visit, cut off the dinner, do not reward Xi Jinping for launching cyber espionage attacks on the United States government. Rand Paul says engage. Engage Russia, engage Syria, engage our adversaries and talk. And Jeb Bush says we have other tools, but Jeb Bush is offensive minded. What did you make of those three? And then we'll ask Charles to comment. What I thought was most interesting was Jeb Bush talking about using offensive cyber means against the Chinese, because Bush's view is that, yes, let's talk to the Chinese, but let's also make them pay. And clearly using a, a cyber warfare technique would be making them pay. I think that this is going to be reverberate. People are going to talk about this because this goes beyond what has generally been discussed in politics in Washington up to now. Charles, a very good evening to you. You saw the exchange as well. We're all watching what we can, given that we're on air right now. Jeb Bush says, use offensive weapons, and uh, Rand Paul says, engage, and Scott Walker says, cut off the dinner, withdraw the invitation. Uh, what would work with Xi Jinping? Did that conversation tonight on a national broadcast, did that warn him that he's gone too far? Well, I think that the you know this kind of visit with the twenty one gun salute at the on the White House lawn and the uh, glittering state banquet, of course, it's not just about making Mr. Xi feel uh, good and valued by Mr. Obama, but it's mostly photo ops which feed back into China and provide Mr. Xi with more legitimacy at a time which, as you just pointed out, his um, his hold on power is is fraying a bit. So. By by allowing it to be a very uh, a, a, you know an official state visit with all of the pomp and circumstance associated with that, um, the Obama administration is in fact um, affirming um, Mr. Xi as the leader of a power that will be depicted in China as being equivalent in as a great power to the United States. So I think from that point of view, the optics of it don't look too good. Uh, in terms of the other aspect of, you know, the cyber espionage, I mean, clearly this is a very, very serious thing. I mean, imagine, uh, you know, without cyber espionage, this is the same as breaking into U.S. government buildings and, and taking uh, microfilms of the files or, or setting up explosive charges on power stations. I mean, but instead of uh, just a few microfilms, the Chinese have taken 22 million federal government employee records, which could be then compared against databases to establish who are working for intelligence services on behalf of the United States abroad and that kind of thing. And the notion that, the, uh, that China would be hacking into critical infrastructure in the United States, which could um, lead to disaster in case of hostilities, is, is just horrendous. So one can see that, that undertaking policies to try and sanction Chinese state firms that we know are engaged in this sort of activity does make a lot of sense, and 
it's it will be something that will very seriously affect Mr. Xi's prestige on return because this will be hitting people in the pocketbook and will um, do con- could do considerable damage to some elements within the Chinese economy. Charles, you talked about the optics of the visit being wrong, and I certainly agree with you because the formalities and the pomp and circumstance of a state visit in these at these times is just completely wrong. There's another issue of optics. And that is, in the week and a half leading up to this point, the Obama administration has been leaking to the press that it was thinking of imposing sanctions on Chinese entities for cyber espionage. And then we learned about two days ago that the administration wouldn't be doing this. I don't know about the substance of what the administration has been doing and talking with the Chinese, but nonetheless, the optics of saying you're going to do something and then not doing it on the eve of Xi Jinping's visit to Washington, I think are not very good. And if there's an issue of leadership, I think the president has got the optics of this wrong in terms of sanctions. If you're going to sanction them, do it. If you talk about it in public, you certainly have to do it. And you can't back down. And that's what people, I think, are talking about now. It looks like the president has backed down. Just a detail here. We're told that in a late night Friday meeting between the United States, Susan Rice of the NSC, and the Chinese opposites, they came to an agreement. We don't know what it is, but the Obama administration, after telling us beforehand that it was looking to sanction Xi Jinping or China in some fashion before the state visit, then told us that that would not happen. Please continue, Charles. Well, I think that it would be much more effective if the United States announced these measures so that Mr. Xi can respond. I mean, evidently what's going to happen is that Mr. Xi is going to have a very pleasant visit, achieve his goal of of, um, affirming his leadership through the the feedback to China, and not discuss anything of substance with Mr. Obama as far as we can make out. And so I do think that that we've got this thing backwards. It would be much better if, if the pressure was on early and he was forced to respond to very legitimate U.S. concerns about this cyber espionage problem, which is very, very serious. And it's not just cyber espionage. We have a whole range of issues with the Chinese. And at this moment, because the Chinese economy is clearly under stress, we have a plunging stock market, we've got a currency under pressure, we have growth in the very low single digits heading towards zero and possibly below. We have enormous leverage over the Chinese at this particular moment because it's not inconceivable that the Chinese political system itself could shake because of the problems in the economy and the other problems in Chinese society. And we do not seem to be employing our national power at this particular time. We're not using our leverage against the Chinese at a time when we have so many disagreements that appear to be intractable. We have the power to be able to do it. We're not using that power. Yes, I, I couldn't agree with you more, and it seems that, you know, the kind of reason that, that Obama is not prepared to raise these important issues is, is because he's afraid it will affect the uh, U.S.-Chinese climate agreement, which uh, applies out to whatever, 2030 or something, or, um, you know, potential Chinese support for the uh, U.S. and Iran nuclear um, arrangements, which doesn't strike me as very likely the Chinese will come out on the U.S. side on that one either. So any reason for holding back on the Chinese leadership strikes me as quite weak compared to, as you say, the very significant issues which are facing uh, China today, which have a serious impact in the United States. Final question, Charles. Does uh, the Chinese leadership, the, 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 the standing committee, do they regard this as a U.S. retreat and that China is rewarded uh, correctly, that China was always going to win this, or did they worry about this? So I, I want to know how arrogant they are, Charles. Well, I think, you know, certainly that military parade, which uh, happened earlier this month, was supposed to establish that China is a great power and the equal of the United States, and therefore the United States and China should have a special nation-to-nation relationship where spheres of influences uh, of influence are divided between the two countries. And I think that that's still something that that the Chinese Politburo believes in this kind of narrative. But uh, fortunately, it doesn't seem to be um, uh, holding much credibility anywhere outside of Beijing. And I think that this visit by Mr. Xi will not lead to the kind of result that the Chinese leadership is projecting onto this uh, visit in terms of the narrative of China's rise and the legitimacy of the rule of the Chinese Communist Party in China.
Charles Burton is a professor at Brock University, Gordon Chang, Forbes.com contributor. Again, the question that Gordon and Charles and I watched in the Republican debate still ongoing about China left three possibilities from the Republican candidates. Rand Paul of Kentucky said that he would engage with China. He didn't characterize how. Scott Walker of Wisconsin said he would cancel the dinner and not reward Xi Jinping for an attack on the United States, cyber attack. And Jeb Bush said that canceling the dinner was a trifle. He used another word. But he did believe that there were offensive weapons to be used against China to make it pay. Those are the three possibilities we heard. I'm John Batchelor.